Do you know how Google analyzes your thumbnail and recognizes objects in them to serve it to a specific audience? Is it a conspiracy theory? Or is it because YouTubers don't want to share their secrets with you? Let's find out. What is up guys, it's Chris and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Let me show you how Google AI works and how it analyzes the data shown in your thumbnails. So the very first thing that I need you to do is to go to Google and type in Google Vision and click the first link that pops up. Now what I want you to do is scroll down and click this gray box. Choose your file, wait until it uploads, confirm you're not a robot, and here it is. The Google AI can read the emotions in your image. As you can see, there is joy, sorrow, anger, surprise, exposed, and so on. It can also detect objects and show them to a relative audience, labels, text divided into blocks, properties such as dominant colors, and it also checks your picture on safe search. Now let's try to load another picture which contains objects and see if Google can recognize them. Here's a thumbnail with a clear object and as we already know, Google is going to show this video to someone who is interested in that particular object. So what you place in your thumbnail is very important. I'm surprised not many people talk about it. And I want to say a huge thank you to Andrew Can for sharing it with me and also helping me with a lot of things. Now what I want you to do is share this video with everyone you know who might be somehow related to YouTube. Not because I want this video to go viral, but because people need to know this. Since not a lot of content creators are talking about this topic like if it was a taboo. So I wanted to share this story with you when I was making my first video on my other channel and I remember it clearly. After publishing the first video I had this huge expectations. I thought it was so cool and I was expecting a lot of likes on that video and at least some engagement on that. But to my disappointment, I woke up to zero views, zero subscribers, zero likes, and it, to be honest, it was kind of discouraging. At that moment, I felt miserable. I didn't know what to do. The problem is, I was actually not prepared at all. My thumbnail and title were not that great. I just took a random snap from my video. I didn't even add any text on it. I was hoping that people would like the, the image, but oh boy, how wrong I was. <laughs> because thumbnails are really important. So what I did this time with this channel, I actually made a research, I tried to look at my competitors, what, what was working for them. I tried to implement my own design and try to stand out somehow. And it actually helped me a lot, I've noticed higher click-through rate. It feels like no matter how good your videos are, if your thumbnail and title suck, nobody's gonna see this video. Even if it's a legendary video and you're just starting out, nobody knows about you, they're not gonna be clicking right away when they see that thumbnail. It was one of the mistakes that I did back then, but I've managed to teach myself how to make better thumbnails. And now, as you can see, my click-through rate is much higher than it was before. And I would say the biggest mistake that I've made in the past was not clicking that like button for the YouTube algorithm so that more people could learn how to make those phenomenal thumbnails and get their high click-through rate. Let's talk about why thumbnails are important and why we should put more effort into them. How do we usually find new videos and how do we choose which one we are going to watch? The answer to this question seems pretty obvious to me. By choosing the picture we like the most and a title that we are interested in. So there always has to be a synergy between your thumbnail and title, but remember the text in your thumbnail should always complement the title, not copy it. One of the first things that I do when I create a thumbnail is I go to YouTube and compare it to what's already up on the platform and is relative to my title and keywords. Thankfully, our friend from vidIQ provided us with a great tool to make it easier. You can do it by typing in your title or a keyword in the box and pressing preview in search results. You can even change the view to how it's gonna look on a mobile device or on the home page. And by the way, you can get your first month for free by using the link I've put in the description. 
The design of your thumbnail totally depends on your preference, but you gotta keep in mind that you're making a thumbnail for a viewer, not for yourself. So the next step would be sharing your thumbnail in your community tab if you already have it unlocked. Either you could go to a Facebook group and ask for constructive criticism. I always do this step and take notes of what people have to say and make my own adjustments to it. Another tip would be to make different versions of your thumbnail if one doesn't perform well, you could always choose an alternative. I get this question asked a lot, should I make separate pictures where I pose or choose a completely random picture from my footage? Personally, I think the best way to do it would be making a photo shoot session specifically for your thumbnail, so that way you could have multiple options to work and batch produce your thumbnails in the future. We all know that people love emotions, and we can make them feel those emotions with our thumbnails. And this is how I usually do it. First, go to Google and type in facial expressions and go to images. Download the photos you like and try to replicate them. This is an example of how I did it. Then I check how confident they are in the Google vision and use them whenever I need a new thumbnail so it saves me some time. And if you want to know more about growing your channel and creating better quality content, click that subscribe button and bell notification so that way you get updates to my upcoming videos as well as my live streams where I review different channels. Okay, so let's create a thumbnail in Photoshop. This is gonna be a long video because I wanna show you step by step how I create my own thumbnails and how I help others to improve their thumbnails. So this is a thumbnail I've created for my live stream channel reviews. And today we are gonna try to recreate it step by step in Photoshop. So we are gonna go with the background first. Usually I like to add some particles to it. Just for the sake of this tutorial, I've prepared a couple of files so that I don't waste time. I usually create particles in After Effects, but there is an easy way for you. There is a site, unsplash.com, I'm gonna leave in the description below, which provides you with free images. So what I'm gonna do is type in particles in the search box. There are some paid particles you could find here, but there are a lot of free images as well. So I'm gonna load the files that I already prepared for this tutorial. And I'm gonna adjust the size to my liking, put it over here. Increase the size again. And I'm gonna duplicate this layer by right-clicking and pressing duplicate layer. Press OK. And I'm gonna hide this layer by clicking this little icon. Now I'm gonna switch to the first layer. Press Ctrl U to change the colors. And I'm gonna press Colorize and adjust the saturation. Drag this hue knob to adjust the colors to the one that I want. We're gonna go with baby blue. The next step is gonna be to adjust the levels. Press Ctrl L or Command L if you are a Mac user. And drag this knob to the left. Maybe add a little bit of contrast by dragging this knob as well. Press OK and you're done. The next step is to bring back the layer that we've hidden. And now what I'm gonna do is right click it and press rasterize layer. And then I'm gonna choose razor tool. Use the soft round preset and adjust the size to my liking. What I'm gonna do now is erase all the unnecessary parts of the image. Something like this would work pretty well. Now what I'm gonna do is create a new layer, choose a simple brush and change the color to bright purple. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of strokes on top of the image and change the blending mode to color. But then again, I'm gonna choose the opacity so that it doesn't stand out that much. Gonna move it a little bit so it doesn't take too much space on the screen. You could also use a razor to remove some unnecessary parts but change the flow to lower value. There we go, looks pretty cool to me. The next step would be to add a tablet that I've already prepared and moving it over here. Something like this would work well. And now I want to add a little bit of those sparkly circles around it. So I'm gonna drag and drop it, increase the size because it's kind of small. There we go. I'm gonna press Ctrl T to transform transform it, rotate it the way I want it. And then, since the background is black, we can change the blending mode to screen. And now as you can see, the black background becomes transparent. The next step is to rasterize this layer as well, so that we can use the eraser tool to remove some unnecessary parts from the image. I'm gonna add a filter, and we're gonna go with some blur. Something like this would work. And I'm also gonna be changing the levels by pressing Ctrl L and dragging this knob a little bit to the right. Press OK 
okay. And I also want to change the color by pressing Control U and dragging this hue knob a little bit to the left so we get this orange look. The next step is to add a picture. I'm going to move it to the left, something like this. Works pretty good. I'm going to rasterize this picture, zoom in and choose the sponge tool. So that way I can desaturate the hair. It's yellow and we're gonna have to change it. So that way it looks more natural. Now, this is a very important step. I'm gonna go to filters and choose camera raw filter. To make the image stand out from the background, I'm gonna add a little bit of clarity, some texture, and I'm also going to add some vibrance to make it more colorful. As you can see, there are a lot of shadows on the left side of my face. I'm going to use the dodge tool to brighten it up a little bit. But now we're also going to have to use the sponge tool because the saturation is way too high, especially in those purple areas. And the next thing that I'm going to do is zoom in, choose the quick selection tool and draw around my eyes. And now I'm going to right click on the selection and press layer via copy. Then I'm going to choose the rectangular tool and choose the left eye specifically. Press Ctrl L and adjust the levels to make it a little bit brighter. The next step is just deselecting this area by left clicking over here. Now I want to change the color of my eyes to match the background color. I'm going to press Ctrl U while this layer is selected. Press Colorize and drag this knob to the color that I need. And also add a little bit of saturation and switch the blending mode to color. I feel like at this point we could make this image look a little bit brighter so I'm gonna go to filters again, camera roll filter, bring the exposure up a little bit, reduce the whites and bring the shadows up. Add a little bit of contrast and press OK. The next step is to duplicate this layer because we're gonna be creating a stroke around me. So I'm gonna double click on this image to open up the layer style. I'm gonna go to stroke, add a stroke, but I'm gonna choose outside, set the size to four, blending mode to color dodge, and I'm gonna change the build type to gradient, change the angle to zero, and change the scale to 10%. I want to pick different colors. Instead of black, I'm going to go and pick something like this, an orange color. For the second color, we're going to go with baby blue. So the next step would be copying this main layer by duplicating it, dragging it down. And then what we're going to do is select rectangular tool and select just the right side of my face. Right click and choose layer via cut. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to add a little bit of glow, but one color on the one side and another color on a different side. So I'm going to right click blending options and choose the outer glow. I'm going to go with a different blend mode and I'm gonna change it to hard light change the opacity to about 69% and I'm gonna change the color as well to more like yellowish I'm gonna go with precise technique change the spread to about 23% and size to about 59 and I'm gonna change the range to 75%. Click OK. Now, to make it easier and faster, we're gonna right click this layer, click Copy Layer Style, choose the second half, right click it and press Paste Layer Style. There we go. Now, double click on Auto Glow and change the color to whatever you like. So, in my case, it's gonna be bluish color. The next step would be adding some text by pressing T, selecting the area and I'm gonna call it channel. Choose the Mirit Pro Bold Italic Phone and we're gonna change the size to 250. And we're gonna skew it a little bit by pressing Ctrl T, holding Ctrl and dragging this left border. Something like this. And now we're gonna change the blending options again and use the gradient overlay. Here are the parameters that I've, of the style that I've chosen already. So it's a custom gradient with orange, yellow, dark yellow and dark purple. We might change the scale just a little bit and the angle as well. 
to something like this. The next step would be to add a stroke effect. Double click the effects, add stroke effect. As you can see, I've used the size of 4, outside position, color dodge, blending mode, opacity 100. Then again, I've used the gradient fill type with orange and baby blue color, angle set to 0, scale set to 10, align with a layer, click OK. Now we want to add a little bit of dimension to this text to make it look like as if it was a 3D text. So we can achieve this effect by adding some shadows. I'm gonna change the color to orange, press OK, change the angle to something like 48 degrees, change the distance to 10, spread to 45, and the size of 4. And we're gonna add another layer of shadow. The color is gonna be black, opacity is 75, distance is gonna be 30, spread is gonna be 0, size is gonna be 0 as well. I think I might want to change the stroke color to black and change the blending mode to normal. Now I think I want to add a little bit of saturation to the text, but in order not to mess with the gradient, I'm gonna create a new group for this text, put my text in that group, close the group, and now I'm gonna add an adjustment layer by clicking this icon and choosing hue and saturation. And I'm gonna hold alt, and then I'm gonna move my mouse just to the border of this layer, so left click it. So that way it's gonna create a mask on top of my text layer and wouldn't affect anything else on this image. Drag the saturation a little bit higher. There we go, now it looks pretty cool. So the next step would be to choose these two layers by holding shift and clicking the layers that you want to choose. Right click, duplicate layers, press OK, drag it down, change the text to whatever you want. I'm gonna go with reviews and I also want to change the color of this layer by changing this adjustment layer. So I'm gonna drag this hue knob to the color that I like. Next step would be adding particles which you can download from the same site I mentioned before. There we go. I'm gonna move this text a little bit lower. And the last step would be adding extra icons. For example, this YouTube logo and the YouTube Live icon, as well as this arrow pointing at reviews. Yeah, so this is it. Basically, this is the thumbnail. And let's see how close it is to the original. We could work a little bit with contrast and clarity, but still it looks almost the same. I also want to show you how I help my friends improve their thumbnails and trying to teach them how to do that. So this was my friend's initial idea. It's a pretty good image overall, but still requires a little bit of work. So this is what I came up with first. I moved the background image and I added a little bit of different color variations. I changed the text and I also added a little bit of outline, added this fire and particle effect. Here is another version with different colorization, a little bit of blue action. As you can see here, the fire casts a little bit of this glow on the statue. Here is another example from our friend Steve. The idea is pretty good, but to my liking, it's a little bit dark and a little bit moody. So I changed the background color to something brighter and I also added more glow with particles around him and changed the outline to white. Added a little bit of contrast clarity to his image as well. And I changed the color of his suit to blue because blue is usually associated with success. So I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and I'm also planning to make another video which is going to be a Canva tutorial on how to easily create your thumbnail using your computer or laptop or your phone. And in the next video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make your phone camera or web camera to look like this, almost like a professional camera. Because what I'm about to show you is how my camera actually looks like. It's a cheap phone, Samsung A22. Here's the initial image, as you can see. It's a completely different story. <laughs> So yeah, stay tuned and you're gonna learn the secrets of how to make it look like this. And I'm also gonna be doing two live streams a week, one on Tuesday and one on Sunday. So if you want your channel to be reviewed, there's gonna be a link in the description where you can apply for those reviews. If you wanna know more about how to grow your channel and get a better quality content, here is a playlist for you. 